Hi everyone, this is Dan and this is uh, Three Nights, Four Days uh, by Micah Curtis with uh, art by uh, Preston Acevedo, uh, colors by Oliver Lee Arce, and letters by Eric Weathers. Uh, <laughs> so this book right here, so those of you who don't know, Micah Curtis has his own uh, YouTube channel. You can go check him out. Uh, I think he was uh, part of the early days of Comicsgate. Uh, kind of, uh, I guess, interesting figure, uh, to say the least. I won't really go too much into that, but, you know, if you follow all the CG stuff and whatnot, you, you know, you should have heard of, uh, Micah Curtis. Uh, I actually did a review on my channel a long time ago, uh, one of his books, which was Inglewood, uh, which, uh, wasn't very well received by some people. I actually thought it was okay. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> this book... Uh, the premise of Three Nights, Four Days, when Micah Curtis uh, first advertised and ran his campaign, uh, I liked a lot. Uh, and then I got it, and I read it, and... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, let's just, uh, let's just get into this book, right? So this book opens up. We have, like, a, sort of a three-panel shot. This knight kind of bloodied up with a, with a book with a hex mark and everything. Know, well, brother, how does it feel to get home to be home? This sort of uh, caption box concept here with the cross with a certain color, by the way, gets reused a lot in this book. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, mainly because it's not really explained to you. You have to kind of infer that when the box and the color changes, it is sort of signifying a specific character, right? Though really, uh, it only really lights up for two of the characters, which would be uh, this character right here, by the way, not introduced in this. Uh, this is Roger. Uh, and then the other character here, Mr. Blondie, who is John. Uh, so, yeah, th so here's the thing. It opens up and you kind of have dialogue between those two. And uh, what Micah tries to do here is exposition the story through dialogue. And I'm going to be honest, he doesn't do a very good job of it. Uh, it's not bad dialogue per se, but it's not very good. Uh, it's not a very good intro, right? The setting isn't really that well. You really have to kind of infer uh, for what's going on. So this is occurring during uh, sort of the uh, after, during the Crusades, right? So these three knights are coming home from uh, their fight in Jerusalem uh, back to England. Uh, again, all of this would have been actually serviced pretty well by just you know, sort of a very light and brief text opener. Uh, because in dialogue, this is kind of a little bit rough for me personally. Uh, and he also would have saved a lot of panels because we could have jumped right into the action really quickly instead of having, you know, basically three pages of people talking, right? Like there's nothing actually going on in this three pages that you can see until you open up to the second page where you see all these dead bodies and whatnot. And then... Uh, two of the knights being shocked, which I'm not sure why they didn't try to do like uh, three of the knights being shocked, but yeah, very interesting layouts. Uh, I will say some of the, sometimes it works and sometimes the layouts uh, don't work. Uh, I'm interested, I think Micah works in full script, uh, but I'm not sure in this case, but anyway, yeah, another interesting thing is, so these three knights kind of explain themselves going back home to Roger's kind of village where he came from this is john this is dietrich and then uh roger is actually native to this area right and he sees all this dead body but the first one to jump out of the wagon is john which doesn't make a whole lot of sense and then they go to the inn and then he meets his sister there which makes even less sense that he wasn't the one jumping out because wouldn't he be worried about his sister and then uh uh, after some introductions, his sister explains that the village is being attacked by demons that are basically uh, killing everybody and uh, even raping some of the women, etc., etc. You know, horrible, mature things, right? And then uh, we jump over, and these guys resolve to uh, sort of fight the uh, the villains right here. Uh, and then you get, uh, <laughs> by the way, you have like a, a typo right here. It says here, Bella Harita. Uh, brothers, this is no different, but it must be done, and I believe we'll, will have victory. You mean, we will have victory. Dea, Deo Volente, right? You get an interesting scene here where you get this preacher who's uh, basically yelling at them that uh, this is all their fault, and this is a trial by God. Uh, this is, uh, for those of you who have ever read Berserk, 
The scenery here feels very familiar to the Troll Saga from Berserk, if you remember that. Uh, but anyway, so what kind of occurs is kind of a, a little bit of a rip from Seven Samurai. The three knights basically tell the villagers, you know, their plan of attack to stop these uh, demons and uh, bandits. And then, uh, you know, you get some pretty good dialogue here as they kind of explain the situation to the people. And then uh, this is actually a really cool layout. I actually kind of like this with the three knights right here, all of different size as they go and they grab and they put their helmets on. Uh, then you get an explanation of what their actual plan is, uh, which is stupid. <laughs> so basically two of the knights kind of hang out uh, waiting for this horde to show up. And then the other knight kind of hangs inside the village uh, waiting for any stragglers to come by. I was like, okay, I guess that's an interesting plan. <laughs> It's like the Seven Samurai, except apparently uh, knights are idiots. <laughs> they don't want to set up any traps or any game plan here, so whatever. And you get the appearance of the, the red uh, dialogue box along with the gray dialogue box, which is signif supposed to signify that different characters uh, either spoken dialogue or thoughts or something going on. I don't know. I, I really dislike the decision-making here uh, with regards to... Uh, these caption boxes because sometimes they're thoughts and sometimes they're dialogue to each other uh, it, it would have been honestly I would have preferred a third person omnipotent or omniscient uh, narrator I think it would have served better rather than all this extra dialogue anyhow we get to uh, demon fighting and whatnot and then uh, for some reason uh, one of the villagers uh, you know, which isn't really shown on camera. Instead, it's just this impact shot right here. But one of the villagers decides to ignore the knights and go out into the open, and then her daughter chases after him, and then she gets ripped in half by this goat monster uh, whom uh, Dietrich has to fight. Uh, by the way, not really explained why she goes out, uh, just she goes out. Also not explained or shown why her daughter, uh, you know, followed her after her, why her father wasn't there, whatever, you know. Uh, whatever. Stop asking questions. What matters is we got our big shot right here. <laughs> There's a lot of it in this book where you're just sort of like, things just happen because they have to happen. So, you know, stop asking questions. <laughs> so, uh, we get a bunch of fights here and there. Uh, it's pretty cool. By the way, uh, very interesting right here. There's a little bit of an art error right here. So he's swiping. You can see the, uh, the, the swing from here to here. Uh, but the axe is like in the opposite direction, right? Like it's it's really weird. It should be like curved over, right? If you're looking at if he was swinging across like like that, right? But uh, yeah, I saw that and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Some really weird uh, decision making here. And again, I, I you know what? Some people really like these. I always think that these are a huge waste of space. Uh, because you only need one panel to show that it's morning and the sun is rising, right? You don't need, like, multiple panels like this is some kind of, uh, you know, what is it, a storyboard, right? Uh, you don't need to storyboard that morning is there. You can just say it's morning and you can put a caption there. Save some space for other stuff, uh, mainly, like, advancing the plot or explaining what the fuck is going on. <laughs> So uh, we get to the morning, and the knights have survived their ordeal, and you get this guy kind of laughing and uh, having some fun. By the way, this girl like uh, runs back to like hug this knight, but I always thought this made no sense because it's like, dude, this guy is like covered in blood, and he's got like a big, you know, goat skull on the ground, and this chick only knows him uh, from saving her last night. So why would she run after him this morning when she doesn't even know him? kind of weird you know at least in my opinion and then uh after the battle uh <laughs> yeah by the way there's like a a random plot thread dump right here with a dragon showing up and then uh the lord of the area shows up and hilariously he doesn't believe the knights that you know they fought demons and then he, like micah has to go through this long scene of showing uh this dude you know you know mumbling to himself as he cuts off the goat monster's head and throws it in front of the Lord to show him, see, it is a demon. And then he's like, oh, I guess I better explain the background. So we've been investigating all these villages, and most of them are, like, torched, and half the people are dead, and there's, like, shrines for demons and stuff. Well, then why would you not believe the freaking knights that they had a freaking demon? <laughs> there's a lot of times where, like, Micah will create a point, like a scene, 
and then he'll like basically uh, <laughs> contradict the value of that scene in the next set of, uh, of story elements. Here's another funny part. So uh, uh, Roger's sister shows up and explains like, you know, this tale of this girl whose father became deathly ill. So she turns to witchcraft to try to save her, do her father. Uh, but then she's like seduced by, you know, a priest warlock. And then, uh, for whatever reason, the townspeople find them and decide to kill the warlock and burn her at the stake. And then some dude tries to save her and then ends up burning alive and all the other stuff. And then, you know, by the end of it, she's, like, perfected her witchcraft of, you know, basically uh, extending her life and making herself live longer. And then, but it says she has to sacrifice a soul to uh, perfect the spell and she sacrifices her father's soul, which literally doesn't make any sense because her whole reason for becoming a witch was to supposedly save her father. So, like, within two pages, there's a, there's a huge contradiction right here. Unless we're, you know, supposedly it's going to be revealed in the next issue. By the way, spoilers for what the freaking ending of this thing is. Holy crap. Oh, and, and then, you know, even more ridiculous is the Lord of the land uh, gives a hundred soldiers to Roger and the three knights to defend the village, uh, which, and then he says he's going to go to his castle to get even more soldiers. But then it begs the question, well, why leave everybody out in the open? Why not take the entire village and all the soldiers back to the castle? So you would be in a better position to defend yourself against said demons, right? Why even leave a force out here? You know what I mean? Doesn't even make any sense. Just it, everything just, Freaking, really stupid. Really, really stupid. By the way, this scene right here, like this buildup, and then, you know, all of these soldiers being frightened, and then, you know, getting encouraging words from Dietrich, uh, would have made a lot more sense if Micah laid it out, or whoever did the layouts, if they had the monsters on this page and this scene on this page. You know, personally, you know, the, the impact of this scene uh, is heavily lessened by the fact that you don't really see the horde that shows up, right? You just go from here to here, and these guys are scared, right? Well, why are they scared? Well, it's probably something to do with the other page, but that would have been better if you showed it here, right? Oh, man. Anyway, yeah, so they have a long fight uh, over the night, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get more of these annoying uh, caption boxes. This time they're being used as thought balloons, essentially. Uh, you know, and then, uh, this is where it really gets stupid. And it, th this is where like, I kind of lost it at this point. So this chick walks out of the, the four, out of the battlefield and then, uh, shows herself to Roger. We meet again. It's been too long. It's good to see you, big brother. I've missed you. It cannot be Cassandra. Okay. So big brother. So what you're saying is the witch is Roger's sister. So, let me get this straight. The witch, who in the story sacrificed her father uh, to learn witchcraft or to perfect witchcraft that she was learning to save her father, uh, is, and whose story, by the way, was told by Sabrina, Roger's other sister, is Cassandra, her little, uh, Roger's little sister. What? why would Roger show up to the village and not ask about his father and Cassandra to Sabrina? Why would Sabrina not mention Cassandra and uh, her father to Roger? Why would Cassandra learn witchcraft to save her father only to uh, later use said witchcraft to sacrifice her father just to turn on everybody like an evil... What? And then there's a bunch of shit here where he talks about, like, how much he likes Warren Ellis and shit like that. I just... I just oh, God damn it. Holy shit. You know, like, here's the deal. The art in this book is better than uh, Englewood. Uh, it, oh, by the way, it, it, that's, that's the story. It's to be continued. Uh... Am I going to buy the next one? I highly doubt it. I, I think I'm... I don't really want to see all the tw all the knots that Mike is going to have to twist himself to basically resolve all these inconsistencies. But whatever. Just 
You know, this is just me personally, but I would rather have a story, you know, that is clear and guided, even if the art is, you know, mediocre, than one that really sounds like it was never really uh, cleaned up in the plots very well. And again, there's nothing against Micah Curtis. You know, I'm sure he really enjoyed writing this. It sounds like it's a lot of stuff that he likes. I know he's a big fan of Berserk uh, and a lot of both, uh, you know, comics and, and manga and stuff. But, like, this needed uh, an editor. I don't see an editor in any of these credits. I think, though, Micah usually has an editor. Uh, but this needed a very strict editor to basically draw out a block diagram and a flow chart to make sure everything actually kind of made sense in terms of the internal logic. You know, because as it is right now, what Mike is going to have to do is basically uh, flip everything on itself in the next issue in order to resolve all of these inconsistencies, right? Uh, do I care enough to really go that far? No, it, just, it, it didn't make sense to begin with, so whatever, right? But yeah, oh boy, right. So, uh, <laughs> that's three nights, four days. Uh, by the way, art is, uh, art's pretty decent. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I think Preston Acevedo's art works better black and white than it does with colors. Uh, especially the colors here. The colors here are really dull, grayed out, and just, they don't really pop. And it's especially important considering that the three nights have to look different, and they all just kind of feel like they're just mushed with warm grays everywhere, right? So uh, I think this book would have been infinitely better with zip tone gray shading, and, and black and white than with color. Uh, otherwise, art's fine. Uh, you know, there's a couple spelling errors here and there, or I should say grammar errors, uh, but not really. I, I think the biggest error is the, the plot <laughs> and the inconsistencies more than anything. Oh, boy. All righty. Anyhow, that's the reviews, guys. <laughs> let me let me know what you think. If you like this video, please uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you have subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments on uh, three nights, four days, leave it down below, and uh, I will see you next time.